Um, all right, my uh, next question. Um, uh, Ayn Rand, like a lot of people in her time, had a deep fascination with uh, the, uh, the ancient Greek world. And um, to put a uh, more point on it, I, I think uh, we really mean ancient Athens, the ancient Athenian Empire. And uh, kind of a sliver about half a century in length that really was its golden era of philosophy and art and culture. Um, what would you say, and I know this is difficult for lack of evidence, but what would you say are some of the cultural differences between that period of time in ancient Greece and let's say in ancient Athens versus contemporary America or in American history as well? That's a great, it's a great question. And, and I'll, I'll refer you as I often do um, to a lecture by Leonard Peikoff. I'll answer the question as well, but I'll also refer you to a lecture by Leonard Peikoff that I'm sure is available somewhere uh, about why ancient Greece is his favorite civilization. Um, and uh, he, I mean, I'm, I'm one of my, one of the proud things, one of the things I've done in my life that I'm proud of is there was a period in time when I, you know, really throughout my tenure at the Institute, well, I, I hired P, uh, Elena Peikoff to do courses and lectures and stuff. And, you know, I hired him to do philosophy through induction. It was my, it was the first time I'd ever done a video conference. It was like, it was over the video. You sat and you watched Leonard on a television screen. And this is in the, this is in the mid to late nineties. This was early technology. It cost us a fortune to do. And it was great. It was great. And he did philosophy through induction. Well, one of the things I, I did is in 1997, I organized a Greek island cruise with uh, a bunch of uh, objectivist intellectuals, including Leonard Peikoff, and there were probably be about 60, 70 attendees, and he and they would lecture on the boat, on the cruise. Now, the, now what people remember from that cruise was, was that the cruise ship sucked, uh, that, it almost, that, it, that it really was not a very nice cruise ship. We tried to keep this cheap. We didn't realize objectivists had money in those days. We thought all objectivists were cheap. Certainly, I was very, I was poor in those days. So I, I didn't know. Um, and so we did it in a very economy and people with a lot of money came and they were, they were disappointed in the facilities. But Leonard gave this lecture on why ancient Greece, as we're going, we did an event in Athens. I got a walk with Leonard Peikoff in places and toast Aristotle at dinner. And, and you know, so it was, it was an amazing, amazing trip. Anyway, I highly recommend that talk by Leonard. Uh, about what made Greek special and why it's his favorite civilization. And I think, I, I mean, at the end of the speech, line, you guys all raise, you all guys all raise a glass at the end and have a toast. Where? Sorry, I missed that. I'm sorry. I believe it, uh, listening to that speech at the end, you all is a, a, a glass and a toast right. raised. I think that's right. I think that's right. And I mean, there were during the whole time in Greece, we, we raised several glasses, I think. Um, but yes, the, the talk was very moving, very emotional, and very powerful. Um, so, um, what was I going? Yes, Greece. I mean, the thing that makes Greeks unique is how intellectual the culture was. Now, remember, when we talk about Greek culture, we're talking about men. We're talking about um, free men, right? So slaves didn't have much of a culture and women didn't participate much. But apart from that, the culture was, you know, phenomenal. I mean, you had, um, you had a deep appreciation for the arts, um, drama, poetry. Uh, you had a deep appreciation for sculpture, decoration, painting, although not many paintings from that era survived. Um, architecture. There was just a deep appreciation for uh, uh, scientists, for thinking, for progress, for, um, um, uh, for philosophers, right? Remember, Socrates walks around town debating people, you know, imagine. I mean, today you'd, they think you were some crazy guy, you know? Some nut who's on his off his meds, engaging people in philosophical discussion. Who the hell does that? We go to school to study and we get, you know, professors telling us what, you know, there's no. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, 
So a, a deep respect for reason, a deep respect for thinking, but a deep respect for beauty and art, and a respect, admiration, and for, the, for, the, for human beings, mind and body. It was a mind and body, it was an integrated culture, a culture of integrate, with an integrated mind and body. So while the Greeks res respected the intellect and loved the intellect, they also respected beauty in body, right? So athletes were heroes and successful athletes were, hero were heroes. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many people know this, but the Olympics, the athletes competed nude. They don't wear anything. So there's even a, a positive, a very pre-Christian positive attitude to the human body, to nudity, to sexuality. So even in terms of sex, I think there's a sense in which they were more open, more, uh, uh, you know, they viewed it as part of life. It wasn't this thing that, you know, somehow initiates original sin and is, is sinful and bad. So it's a, it's a civilization of mind-body integration, real integration of knowledge, um, a, 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 a admiration of, of, of human beings, admiration of heroes, uh, admiration of beauty. And, you know, you walked in a Greek city, sculptures, and not just Athens. I mean, I, I've been to Ephesus, which is the, probably the best preserved uh, ancient Greek ruins. And it's just magnificent, and the and the and the sculptures everywhere. Everything is sculptures, and everything is decorated, and you and and it's it's alive. It's 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 alive in a way that I don't think our civilization is. We we, we suffer so. I mean, I don't think I don't think any almost anybody appreciates the extent to which Christianity is destructive to the human spirit and destructive to, to, to civilization and uh, how, how much we've got to overcome in overcoming original sin, Garden of Eden, all these, all these religious mythologies that, you know, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Jordan Peterson celebrates and we should, we should condemn and we should move on from. So yeah, Greece was amazing. I get the impression that a lot of uh, the, what we think of as public works of, uh, um, create creations of public baths and things in ancient Greece and ancient Rome were largely privately funded by large, you know, large donors. They could have been, I, I don't know enough of the history, but it, it wasn't a laissez-faire place, but it was the place of democracy in the sense that of, of people actually determining their own political fate. And, um, and there was a lot of positive, I mean, yes. And it was a beginning of a market and Athens was a trading. It was a port. And it was a trading um, a city that became rich through trade. Uh, first, maybe not the first, the Phoenicians were probably the first, but they continued the trend towards globalization in the context, their context. Globalization meant trade across the entire Middle East and even contact with far away places like India and China existed back then through, through kind of the Persian Empire. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, but the, the real expression of Greece is through its art and through its philosophy. I think we all agree that the Olympics should be uh, done naked now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we all agree, but yes, that would be something. That would be something. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. 
all it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing. Whether you're looking at this, uh, and and you know the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>